say you've got some guy who's married <clears throat> he's already within that system like he's heavily entrenched right and i know you just gave the reference of transformation can hit you at any time with allah's blessings right but someone's married and like they're in a 50-50 relationship you know like oh you know, even if they're like buying a course or something the wife might be we haven't discussed this you know what i mean like they're in a completely different way of being <laughs> so like i was thinking about this yesterday i was on a walk and i was thinking about the podcast and i was thinking some of my people that i know let's say and i was thinking of their situation even if they agree with it what can they actually do as in like it's very difficult to um say if you you've already made the decisions so like you know how there's frame control and like change the dynamics even that's hard to do like you know once you've got a set dynamic in a relationship for like however many years and then suddenly after like one day you get this realization and you try to put your foot down it's not going to go it's not going to go necessarily the right way um so what would be some advice and some thoughts on that how people can deal with that like element of resistance okay it's a very good question mashallah actually this is the reason why we're stuck in this this vicious cycle so technically your average muslim man today and this is the problem with the ummah we're happy with being average and it's a disease right because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has ordered us ihsan ahsanu kam ahsana allah ilayk make ihsan as allah has made ihsan for you so we're stuck in this mediocrity comfort zone this 50-50 thing that you said and um basically a father a man he'll marry okay he'll have to take permission from his wife for many things he might be doing 50-50 he has no authority um he doesn't you know assert himself and he's kind of followed this culture of yeah you know i mean sadly you you feel you see now men opposing the leadership of men men saying that no women can do it better or you know you got these men feminists these you know or sorry not men male feminists let's say because they're not real men and you know it's the same guys who are putting their wives all over instagram and tiktok and they have these cooperations and this sad man is very very sad so the same you know we our children going to grow up and they're going to see their father just kind of going to work coming home 9 to 5 uh, going to the park on the weekend going to the mall getting old losing their hair growing a belly and then guess what the child's going to do the same thing okay we need to unplug at least one generation two generations to break this cycle and i believe that if our sons see us sacrificing standing our ground even if it's against our families i'm not i'm not i'm not uh, advocating here for divorce I fight Allah is my witness that in my counseling sessions you know I fight against divorce I tell people I try to tell people it's the last option ever but if you really want to change you want to unplug yourself from this vicious cycle where your son is just going to do the same thing that you've done or worse then you need to stand your ground and you need to be willing to lose everything right because when a when a man wakes up and he says i want to reclaim my position what's going to happen if you own a building or a property and someone moves into your place okay and takes half of it and then one day you realize you wake up and like wait a second this is my thing this is my responsibility i want to reclaim my position what do you think that person's going to be like yeah take it no but you got to be willing to lose everything if you want to change If you want to make a change you have to actually risk everything you have to be willing to lose everything you're not willing to lose everything like the sahabas did when they went out they didn't have no insurance man they're willing to lose everything this is the prophetic way if you're not willing to lose everything after the first battle of of Uhud when the prophet Hassan was hurt okay he gathered the sahabas the next day they were ready for battle again heard limping holding on to each other he said everyone get up let's go we're ready again okay 
you're not willing to lose everything, then you're not ever going to change. This is the mindset. I'm not saying you will lose. Some people will oppose you. Maybe your wife is going to oppose you. Most likely, in many, many examples, we have the sisters telling the guy, the husband, man, shut up and sit down and don't think about these things. You know, what you're talking about changing and trying to be a leader and this and that. Stop it. You need to go to work in the morning, right? And the, the guy, he has this dream. He has this ambition and it gets shut down, okay? Because he starts doubting himself. He's like, yeah, maybe she's right. Let me just go back to that nine to five. That way, no one's ever going to risk anything. If you want to become something you, you, you are not, you have to be willing to do things you've never done. It's very simple. And again, it's not me coming up with some philosophy or something, some Machiavellian philosophy. This is look at the Sahaba, look at the Prophet ﷺ. If we believe that these men knew the best, then we need to believe that the path they took is the best path. And they risked it all, they put it on the line, and look at the verse of the Quran, Al-Mad wal Banun as Zinatul Hayat Dunya. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al talks about, look at so many ayat about these things, okay? Uh, the test, and it, it's just the way. So, someone's going to tell you, no, stop dreaming, bro. Sit <laughs> down, go to sleep, wait, go to work. Trust me, they will tell you that. They will tell you, they'll tell you, bro, bruv, dude, <laughs> man. That's how sometimes the sisters talk to the husband these days. Yeah. Okay. And the bruv, he just sits down and says, yeah. Okay. Sadly, right. They put their head down and says, what am I talking? So you need to stand. If she doesn't like it, well, guess what? It is what it is, man. Mm. Are you willing to have that attitude? Most men will not mm. because we like our comfort. We can't stand one or two days without intimacy. We can't control our our temper, our, our ability. We're scared where we don't, we don't rely upon. This is a problem. Theoretically, we rely upon Allah, but practically we don't really do it. We're scared. We're scared that the government is going to take everything from us. We're scared that, and bro, look at what's happening. I'm not talking here from theoretical, but I'm talking about, you know, more than 15 years of counseling. I'm talking about four clients a day. I'm bringing you this information from the trenches. This is what it is. Mm. You, you have, but you have to, you have to stand your ground. And hopefully, yes, maybe I'm going to sacrifice myself. Maybe I'm going to lose stuff, but maybe the next generation is going to say, Hey, these guys, these guys got it. Let's follow that example. If not, then keep going to the park, keep, you know, going to the, to the, to the mall and you lose your hair and grow your belly and, you know, that's it. Mm. And, you know, you got to die at, the, as was that Abraham Lincoln, right? Who said that most men die at 25. It's just that we buried them at 60.